Today I will start the inverter refrigerator compressor directly. For starting the compressor, having the main motherboard and the IPM PCB board is really important in the Samsung refrigerator. But in this video, I will start the inverter compressor without this main motherboard and use the IPM board only. For starting the compressor, I have made this device, I have installed the device in this box, but I will tell you how to make one in the later part of this video. First of all, let me connect this device to the IPM board. And this will start this compressor. I will connect the device connector to this connector. The PWM signals are given here on this connector, which we get from the main motherboard. It has four pins inside the connector. 5 volts, ground, RPM, and feedback. On the 5 volt pin, we will connect 5 volts positive supply. The ground will be kept empty. On the RPM pin, I will connect the ground wire. The feedback and the ground pins will be ignored. Then this PCB will start working. Now I am connecting the device with the connector. Then now let me attach the main supply and the compressor connections. Then on the device input, I will give 5 volts DC supply. I am switching on the power supply now. Switch on the output of the power supply. As I have passed electricity to the device, you can see the device LED has turned on. Now you will see that the LED will glow on the IPM board and stop glowing, which means that the system or microcontroller is working fine. Let me turn on the electricity. As I pass the electricity, the light switched on and then offs. The LED is blinking three times, as we have not installed the compressor wire till now. Whenever the IPM board blinks three times, it means that the compressor has some sort of problem. The compressor wire is not attached, which means this is the compressor problem. I have connected the compressor connector. Now let me pass the electricity again. The LED turns on and then offs, as I attach the device output wire. The compressor has started to work you can hear the voice of the compressor as well. When the compressor starts, then this LED keeps glowing, which means that the system is absolutely fine. Now, I am rotating the knob of the PWM device to the off position. When I rotated the compressor to the off position, the compressor stops running now. The LED has also started to glow, which is bit to bit. Now I will check it with the oscilloscope. The compressor is running right now and I will now check why the compressor stops when I slow down its speed. I am connecting the DSO wires to check this out. The oscilloscope is showing us these signals. Let me one time press the auto button on the DSO. The inverter compressor speed is changing. Now its speed has increased. Now the compressor is at its maximum speed. This means that the frequency is at 1.2 kHz. At this frequency, the compressor is working absolutely fine. And when we decrease the frequency of the compressor, at 850 Hz, its speed has slowed down. At 830 Hz, the compressor stopped. If I increase the compressor frequency again, at 1.53 kHz, the compressor starts and works fine. Now I will talk about the PWM. This means pulse width modulation. On the oscilloscope, we can actually see pulse width modulation. The signals are shown on the oscilloscope. This upper line shows the duty cycle of the on-time signals. The lower line shows the duty cycle of the off-time signals. And this is known as pulse width modulation. This means the duration in which the signals are on and off. Let me show you its value. See this, the positive width is getting on for. 428 microseconds and the negative width for 168 microseconds. This is called pulse width modulation. Now let's open this device and show you what is inside it. I have opened the screws of the box. Let me show you what is inside it. See, I have made a circuit and installed it in this box. I have installed a potentiometer. 5 mm length ED with it. I have made this circuit on the Vero board. This box is quite bigger than the PCB we have installed in it as this box was available. So I have used it. I gave the 5 volts through the power supply to power the circuit. We can't carry the power supply as it is not portable. For a permanent power supply, 
I am using this adapter for a permanent DC 5 volt supply. Let me show you the adapter input and output specifications. Input is 100 to 240 volts AC. The output is 5 volts DC. The current is 800 milliamperes. It will work perfectly for the circuit to operate. I have attached the adapter with the device so that I can carry this device with me. Let me plug the adapter into the electric switch to test the circuit with the adapter as well. The electricity has started flowing inside it. I will attach the PWM wire again with the PCB and see if the compressor has started and run. The compressor has started and worked absolutely, which means this adapter is fully functioning with this circuit, and I can carry it with me. This is the circuit diagram of this device. Use a triple 5 IC, which is a very popular IC. The input supply is 5 volts of DC. Use a 220 microfarad and 25 volts capacitor on the input. Install the capacitor with the correct polarity. This will be used for the filtration. Join the positive wire with 8 number pin and the 4 number pin of the IC. The positive wire will also be joined with the 7 number pin but attach 1 kilo ohm of resistor between 8 and 7 number pin. The negative wire will be attached with 1 number pin, then with 5 number pin, but a 103 PF capacitor will be installed between them. Join the second number pin with the sixth number pin. Then take a 103 PF capacitor and join it with the second number pin and ground wire. Take a potentiometer of 20 kilo ohms. Connect two 4148 diodes on the sides of the potentiometer. The one negative side will be the downside, and the other on the upside. Join these diodes together and connect them with the two number pin of the IC. The three number pin is the output pin. Connected this pin with the potentiometer center pin. The ground wire will directly be the negative output wire. Attach an LED between them, as the LED will indicate whether the PCB is working or not. Attach 470 ohms resistance with the LED on the positive output side. And the LED negative side with the ground wire. We will get the output as PWM. Now I will give you a tip here. Whenever you attach the IC on the zero board, never solder it, as when I soldered it, the IC got damaged. So I made another PCB board. Solder the IC base with the Vero board, then place IC on the top. The same is for the potentiometer. When I was soldering it, the points were getting damaged. Use this 8-pin base for it. First, check which legs you have to solder. Then attach the potentiometer. I opened one of the potentiometers, they burned out. Then the circuit knot makes the PWM at the output. This is in today's video, I will see you in the next one. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch the next video and subscribe, it is absolutely free of cost, thank you.